In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural dry clay material. So this material would be really great to add to like a clay pot or some other dry clay object. And this tutorial is an updated version from my very first procedural clay material which I created on my YouTube channel over four years ago. So I'm going back and recreating some of my very first procedural material videos so that they're updated with the latest Blender version, they look more realistic, and the updated materials will also be joined together into custom node groups. So for this material, we have the overall scale to change the size of the entire material. And then we have two different colors for the clay. So you can kind of get some slight variations. So color one, and then also color two. So you can make it a bit darker or more of a red clay or whatever you want to do. Then we also have this noise scale value, just a bit of noise over the material. And then we also have this crack scale. So I can have smaller cracks or bigger cracks. And you can see the cracks are really quite subtle. And I wanted to keep them pretty subtle because I think that makes it look nicer. Then we have the thickness of the crack. So you can make the cracks much larger or you can make them more thin and if I turn up the cracks bump strength You can definitely see that better so you can see now I can change the crack thickness so I can make it bigger or can make it more thin. Then we also have a detail level for the cracks to make it more and less detailed. And then we also have the roughness of the material, but I like to keep it pretty rough so it looks like a dry clay. And then we also have the bump strength and then also the cracks bump strength. So if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel, you can get that with the links in the description on my Gumroad and Patreon. And you can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. Now I've recently finished creating another 10 procedural materials so I've just released my next procedural material pack. This is procedural material pack 25 and in this material pack you'll get all of these 10 different procedural materials and these are my most recent 10 materials. Now all of these 10 new materials have also just been added to my ultimate blender procedural material pack so all of my existing customers can re-download the product files to get the new updates with all of these new materials. So if you're interested in purchasing my ultimate material pack with all my materials or just my 10 recent new materials I'll have all those links in the description description. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So real quick, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport. So I'm going to add an icosphere, and right behind me on the add icosphere settings, I'm going to turn the subdivisions up to 6 so it is nice and smooth, and I'll just shade the object smooth. And then to model closer to the real life scale in Blender, the default objects are quite large. So I'm going to scale this object down by a 0.2, and then I will press Control A and apply the scale. Now I also wanted to add this material to a clay pot, so you can see I just added a very low poly cylinder, and then I just kind of extruded it down, kind of made the lip of the pot, and then I also added a subdivision surface modifier so it's nice and smooth. So as long as you know the very basics of 3D modeling, this should be quite easy to model. And then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the objects. And if you select the camera and then go right over here to the object data properties, I turn the focal length up to 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a bit. I'll go into the rendered view and I have a few different lights here. So I have this little light here on the back to kind of add a rim light. So this is an area light. I turned the shape to disc and I turned the power to 80. And then I also added this light right here. So this light is really small. The power is set to 40. And so that's just kind of a bright light on the front shining on the objects and this light is also set to disk. And then also over here on the world properties, I added in this Brick Factory 02 HDRI from polyhaven.com. Link will be in the description if you want to download it. And I download the 1K HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color and you can choose environment texture and then just click on the open button and open up the downloaded HDRI. And then if you want to make the background transparent like I have, you can go up here to the render properties, you can open up the film tab and just check mark the transparent button. And then also right here on the color management on the very bottom, I'm using the view transform of filmic and the look to a very high contrast. So it pops out the colors and make things more saturated and contrasted. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'll just go into the rendered viewport mode. Let's just make this smaller here and then I'll just close the side panel. So right over here, I'm in the shader editor. So I'll just select the object and we'll add a new material and I can just call this dry clay. And then I can add the dry clay to the other object so they both have the same material. And then I'm also gonna be using the node wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can click on edit you can go to the preferences and here on the add-ons tab, just search for node and you can just enable the node regular add-on. So let's start by creating the base color. So to create the base color, I'm going to add a noise texture and let's control shift, select the noise texture, preview it on the object. 
Now with the noise texture selected, I'll press Control T to add the texture coordinate mapping. And I'm gonna use the object coordinates. So put the object into the vector and the object coordinates are going to place the noise texture on the object more evenly. Now I wanna keep my nodes nicely organized. So I'm gonna click and drag to box select these nodes and I'll hit Control J and that is going to add the nodes into a frame. And I can select the frame and press F2 to give it a label. And I can just call this mapping just to keep things really organized. So now here on the noise texture, let's change some of the settings. So I'm gonna turn the scale to 20 and I'll turn the detail up to a 12 so it's pretty detailed. And I'll turn the roughness to a 0.85 and the roughness turning that to 0.85 makes it look very powdery and very, very detailed. Now this is kind of gray right now and I wanna make it more contrasted so it's more clear which is one color and which is the other color. So I'm going to add a color ramp and I'll just drop the color ramp right here. And then I can start to drag these closer together. And you can see as I drag them together, it's more clear where the black parts are and where the white parts are. So I'll just drag these to kind of about there. So I now wanna make some custom colors instead of just using white and black. So I'm gonna search for a mixed color and drop it here after the color ramp. Now the color needs to go into the factor. And so now I can change color A and color B to make the custom colors. So for color A, I'm gonna go with this light gray. And if you wanna use the same exact color I'm using, you can punch in the same hex value. And then for color B, this is a similar color, but it's a little bit darker. And here is the hex value. So let's box select these nodes and we'll join them together into a frame and I'll add a label and I can just call this color. So now we can take the mix result and we can put that into the base color of the material and I'll just preview the material and already that's starting to look like clay. I do wanna make it look really dry though cause it's a like a dry clay. So I'm gonna turn this roughness to a 0.85 so it's more dry. So now let's make the texture for the cracks. So to do this, I'm gonna first search for a noise texture, drop it here. We can preview the noise and I'm gonna put the vector into the vector of this noise texture. And then we can change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to six. Let's turn the detail to 12 so it's more detailed and I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now to make this look like cracks, what we can do is search for a color ramp. And we can put the color ramp here after the noise texture. So now I can drag the black tab out and drag the white tab out. But what I wanna do is add another white tab on the other side. And that's going to make another white spot on the other side. So hold down the control key and you can click right there to add a white tab. And then if you drag the white tab over to the other side, you can see now we have these little cracks because it's white on this side, then it's black in the middle, and then it's white on this side. And I'm actually gonna drag this over here and then drag this one over here and then drag this one really close. So you can see there's some little tiny cracks. And then let's hold down the control key and we're gonna click three times. So we'll click here, click here and click here. And then if you click on the one in the middle, we can also make this black. And now there's gonna be some more cracks. And I'm gonna do that one more time. So click three times here maybe move these over a little bit. And then if you click on the center one, we're gonna make this black as well. And you might need to kind of move these over a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So now you have some different little bits of cracks here and there. But the problem with these is that they're kind of all circular. If I just zoom into this, you can see like this crack just goes around in a circle. This crack goes around in a circle. And that's because it's using like the contrast of the color ramp. So what I'm gonna do is create a mask and then we're gonna just kind of blotch out some areas and make it white so that they don't just all look like circles. So what I'm gonna do is select both of these nodes and I'll press Control Shift D. Control Shift D will duplicate the nodes but keep the wires plugged up. And I'm gonna select the color ramp and I'm gonna hit the backspace to reset it. And now I can just pre preview the color ramp and I'll drag the black tab to about here and drag the white tab over to about here. So something like that. And now I wanna change some of the noise settings. So I'm gonna turn the scale to 25 so it's a lot smaller. So we have a bunch of little black areas. But then I'll leave the other settings how they are. So now I'm gonna mix these two together. So if I select the color ramp here and then the other color ramp with both of them selected, I can hit control zero. And control zero is gonna add this mixed color and it will plug them both together. So I'll just drag this right over here. So what I wanna do is use this bottom color ramp as a mask because it's kind of those black areas. So we'll put the color into the factor. Then we're gonna take the top color and we're gonna put that into color A. And so now for color B, we can make this fully white. So now you can see the cracks are just in a few areas here and there, and it looks more random. And why this is working is because the color ramp here, this bottom one is going into the factor. So that's telling it what part is gonna be color A and what part's gonna be color B. So color A is the cracks, but then color B is white. So basically wherever these white areas are, like right here, you can see that is where you aren't gonna be able to see the cracks. But then where the black parts are, that is where you can see the cracks. So let's box select these nodes. 
join them into a frame. We can add a label and I'm just going to call this cracks. Now later on in the custom node group, I want more customizable settings over the cracks. So one thing that I'm going to do is search for a hue saturation value and drop it here after the mix. And so with this hue saturation value, we can drag this value up and down. And you can see if I turn the value down, it's going to make the cracks thicker because everything is darker. So the cracks are bigger. Or if I turn it up, you can see the cracks get really thin. So we'll use that later in the custom node group. Now these cracks are also still going to be a little bit too big and I want them to be more sharp. So I'm going to search for a color ramp and I'll drop this here and drag it into the same frame. And now what I can do is make it even more contrasted. So I'll drag the black tab over here and then I'll drag the white tab over here. So it's even more contrasted. So it's very clear where the cracks are and where they aren't are. So let's now preview the principal shader. Now we can't actually see the cracks because we haven't actually added them into the shader. So what I'm going to do is search for the bump node and we'll drop the bump node here and we want to use the bump node to convert the black and white data into normal data that the shader can use so it actually looks bumpy. So we'll take the color ramp color and we're going to put that into the height value of the bump and then we'll put the bump normal into the normal of the shader. And I can see where the cracks are, they look really bumpy, but it's really strong so we'll turn the strength down to a 0.15 so now the cracks are much more subtle. Now I also want to add just a little bit of noise over the entire material so I want to use this same noise texture, however I don't want the roughness to be that high because if the roughness is that high I just really don't like how the material looks. It just makes it look a little bit too powdery and too noisy on the surface. So I'm going to select this noise texture and I'll press Control shift D to duplicate the node but keep the wire plugged up and I'll press Alt P to bring it out of the frame. And let's just drag this noise texture right down here. So I can preview the noise texture and I basically want this to be the same thing or look the same but I'm just going to turn the roughness down to 0.7 so it's not quite as powdery. So now what I want to do is duplicate this bump node and drop it here after the first one so the normal can go through the normal so we now have this extra height value that we can add data into. So let's take the noise texture factor and I'll put that into the height and then I'll just preview the principled shader. So now if I turn up the strength you can see how that noise is looking. So it's adding bump all over the surface but I'm going to turn these strength to just a 0.1 so it's pretty subtle so now there's just a little bit of noise over the surface but you can see if I turn this roughness up really high it just looks a little bit too powdery and I don't like how that looks so I like leaving it at a 0.7 so the noise is slightly more chunky and we can box select these nodes join it together into a frame and we can add a label and I'll just call it bump so that's it for the procedural material so let's now join it together into a custom node group so I'm just going to box select all these nodes accept the material output and I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group. So you can hit the tab key to go in and out of the node group. So let's go out of the node group and I'll just drag it right over here and we'll open up the node group to make it bigger. And then I'll copy the material name and add it here into the node group. So let's go into the node group and I'll hit the N key to open the side panel. And if you go to the group tab, we have the group sockets and I'm just gonna rename this to shader. So just double click on it, rename it to shader. So outside of the node group, you can see it's called shader. And I just like how that looks a bit better. So let's go back into the node group. So then right over here on this side, we have the group input. And we can plug up all the custom values to this group input. And then that way we'll be able to control them outside of the node group. So what I want to do is control the entire size of the entire material. So this mapping here, this is plugged up to all of the texture nodes. So we can use the scale value to change the size of the entire material. So I'll put the scale into the extra socket here. And if I click on the scale, you can see it's going to be three values, but I just want it to be one value instead. So we'll change the vector to a float instead. Then we'll turn the default value to one. And then if we go outside the node group, we'll turn the scale to one. So now you can see that's changing the size of the entire texture. So we'll go back into the node group. Then I want to control the custom colors, so we'll drag the group input right up here. And let's take color A and color B and put that into the extra socket. Let's open up the group sockets here, and I'll just rename this to color 1, and this one is going to be color 2. And then this group input was put inside the frame, so you can just hit Alt P. Alt P will bring it out of the frame. So now I want to control the noise scale. So let's put this scale value into the extra socket, but then I also want it to affect the bump. So if I just drag the group input right down here, this noise texture is basically the same. The roughness value has only been changed. So we're going to take this scale value from this noise and we're going to put it into the same scale value. And since the scale was both 20 outside the node group, this scale here is going to change the size of both of the noise textures. So we'll go back into the node group and then let's just rename 
rename this. So instead of scale, I'm gonna call it noise scale. So now I wanna control the crack scale. So I'll drag the node group back here and let's just box select these nodes and drag them back a bit. Now, both of these noise textures are controlling the cracks. So I wanna control both of the scale values, but you can see the scale values are different values. So what I'm gonna to do to control both of them at the same time is I'm gonna search for a mapping node and I'll stick it right here. And then what we can do is take this same noise texture and we'll put this mapping vector into the vector. So this mapping is controlling the scale of both of them. Let's put the mapping here into the cracks. So now these scale values will control the size of both of them because they're both going into the vectors. So now we can take the scale value, put that into the extra socket, and let's just rename this to crack scale. And then instead of vector, we wanna make it float, so it is just one value. And again, we need to turn the default value back to one. And then if we hit tab, we wanna turn the crack scale back to one. So now that's controlling the size of the cracks. So let's go back into the new group. And then I also wanna control the thickness of the cracks. So let's take this hue saturation value. You can see this value here is gonna control the thickness of it. It's a little bit hard to see, but if I kinda of zoom in here, you can see by changing the value, the cracks are getting thicker there. So we'll put the value into the extra socket, and then let's rename this to cracks thickness. Then I wanna control the detail of the cracks. So you can see both of these noise textures have the same detail value. So I'll put the detail into the extra socket, and then this detail will go into the same exact socket. And let's just rename this to cracks detail. Then I wanna control the roughness of the material. So I'll drag the node group right up here. And let's take the roughness and put that into the extra socket. And then finally, I wanna control the bump strengths. So this first one here is the cracks. So we'll put the strength in the extra socket. And this one we're gonna rename to cracks bump strength. And then the last one here, this one is just the noise. So we'll put the strength into the extra socket. And this one, I'm just going to rename this to bump strength. So let's drag the group input right back here and I'll hit the N key to close the side panel and I'll hit tab to go outside the node group and there's the final material. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the entire material. Then we have both of the different colors. So you can customize the colors. You can make it more of like a red clay or you can make it a lighter clay or a darker clay and just customize the colors. We also have the noise scale. Then we also have the crack scale. Let's just turn up the cracks bump strength so you can see it a bit stronger. So you can see we have the crack scale. And then we also have the cracks thickness to make it thicker or more thin. We also have the detail of the cracks. So if you wanna make it less detailed, you can. And then we also have the roughness in the material. And then of course the cracks bump strength, but I'm gonna keep it very subtle because I think it looks better if it's subtle. And then we also just have the bump strength of the overall surface. So that's gonna be it for this tutorial. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel, you can purchase this material on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. You can also purchase my ultimate blender procedural material pack. So my ultimate material pack comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. So once you've purchased and installed my ultimate material pack as an asset library into Blender, you can just drag and drop the procedural materials into your 3D projects to quickly add materials to your scene. Now I've also created another 10 procedural materials, so I've just released my procedural material pack 25, and these are all of my 10 most recent procedural materials, so if you'd like to check out that material pack, links to that will be in the description. And these 10 new materials have also just been added to my ultimate procedural material pack, so all of my existing customers can re-download the product files to get the updates with the new materials. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.